Howdy, my name's Tate McCrell, and I will be doing my presentation, or my lecture rather, over uh, Emerald Ash Borers, uh, along with my group, and my section pertains to their invasiveness and spread. Um, I won't go into the local information about their uh, spread so much, that, that is another section of our presentation, but I will definitely talk about their invasiveness in America and Europe. Uh, what makes them so invasive and damaging to our ash tree population. And, yeah, let's get into it. Uh, the native habitat of the emerald ash borer is Northeast Asia, uh, and that includes Eastern Russia, Northern China, Japan, and Korea. And... They are much more controlled uh, in their native habitat. They are not just running wild, destroying every ash tree in sight. Um, their density is much lower, and they don't kill nearly as many trees, and they don't kill nearly as many healthy trees. Um, and prior to their invasion of America and Europe, we there was not all that much research and data into the emerald ash borer, uh, but since then there's been a lot of research uh, specifically pertaining to how to prevent the death of all of our ash trees in America. Um, yeah, and uh, the question is why are they so much more lethal to American ash trees? Ash trees. And... Uh, why are they so much less lethal to Asian ash trees? Uh, and the trick is that um, the ecosystem is, is much more forgiving uh, in America and in Europe. Um, the ash trees themselves that they attack in Asia are much more um, sturdy, and they've got so many more defenses against the emerald ash borer that we just don't have in America. They typically only attack stressed or dying native ash trees in Asia, and of that, only a few um, species typically. Whereas any North American ash tree, ash tree uh, that has been transplanted to Asia are attacked viciously. Um, and one fact that is very interesting and telling is that Asian ash trees that are planted directly adjacent to North American transplanted ash trees in Asia are uh, unlikely to be infested um, even when the adjacent American ash tree is completely infested. And uh, any, any transplanted American ash trees in Asia right now are are they're ninety five percent infected with or infested with uh, emerald ash borers? Our trees just are not built to defend against emerald ash borers. They don't have the natural defenses, um, and those defenses are uh, host volatiles, nutrition, and defense compounds within the tree, uh, as well as other things that I'm sure I'll mention later, uh, including the bark and um, predators as well. The Asian ecosystem, just speaking of predators, has got way more predators. And we've got some in America too, but not nearly as many. Uh, they've got the great spotted woodpecker, Dendrocopos major, and the gray-headed woodpecker, Picus canis, in Asia, that eat emerald ash borers right out of the tree. Um, and American woodpeckers do eat emerald ash borers, but it's not enough. They're not effective enough um, predators to keep the population down to where it needs to be. Um, they've also got a bunch of other predators, not just woodpeckers. They've got uh, Asian ants, which eat emerald ash borer larvae. Those ants being uh, Plagiolepis, 
Monturica. That one's tough. Uh, played Ulipus, Aluadi, Cremato Gaster, Terrari, and Cremato Gaster, Edgidae, I think. Those are all species of ants which eat the larva. Um, Spathius agrilli is a parasitic non stinging wasp that uh, attacks the larva as a parasite. And you can see that on the right there, that's an image of one of them. They'll come back up in my presentation as well. They're very important. Ubius agrilli are also an par Asian parasitic non stinging wasp, but they attack the eggs. And then we've got uh, some diseases that are specific to emerald ash borers as well. Um, Buverin, Basawi, oof, that's not right. Um, I'm, I'm going to stop reading the Latin names because it's a waste of time. But that's their pathogens, the diseases that can attack the emerald ash borer. And um, like 10% of Asian ash borer, or of a, uh, sorry, uh, emerald um, ash borer uh, populations in Asia. I don't remember the specific number, but I read it's around 10% uh, are infest infected with these pathogens. Um, and then here are some of the mitiga mitigating factors in Asia that we need to look towards when we look at our own tree population because it's a grim situation. Um, to a certain extent, ash trees are more susceptible to emerald ash borer infestation if they are in a group or if they're on the edge of a forest. So integrated forests uh, with ash trees and other types of trees surrounding them and ash trees not on the outside uh, decreases the likelihood to a certain extent, but I'll cover that a little bit more later. Um, just conducting surveys and removing dead ash trees where that is practical is a very effective method of mitigation because dead ash trees are worse than alive ash trees. Emerald ash borers within a dead ash tree produce more offspring and uh, live can live there in higher densities. And this is sort of an important one. Smooth ash trees are less susceptible uh, to emerald ash borers on their face. And they're also better for those wasps that we talked about earlier. Um, smooth ash trees have increased rates of parasitism of those wasps on emerald ash borers. Uh, and now we're looking at some of the possible strategies going forward for attacking and preventing the destruction of ash trees in America. Uh, one important element of our strategies is that emerald ash borers emerge for 10 days prior to meet mating. So they exit the tree for 10 days and eat leaves. And it creates a small 10-day window, sort of, where um, before mating, where we could attack the emerald ash borer using insecticides, sexual attractants, or trapping. And we are we're, those have all been sort of explored, and I know a little bit about the different uh, methods, uh, and they're they're within this presentation. Um, Spathius agrilli, that wasp from earlier has been released in the United States to combat emerald ash borers, but we don't know how effective they are yet. Uh, we don't know if that's a possible route to um, population control because we've got woodpeckers and they've got woodpeckers, uh, and that's not enough. So it's forming the picture, forming enough controls to effectively preserve our ash trees is important. We don't know yet if the wasp will be enough. I kind of suspect it probably won't be. Um, decoy emerald ash borer females, um, which would be those sexual attractants, uh, 
have been used in Hungary, but the decoys attracted other uh, species of insects as well that they didn't want to, uh, whose population didn't need controlling. So that is still a work in progress. Um, because to fully roll out population control against the emerald ash borer, we can't be accidentally controlling the population of other non-invasive, non-harmful insects that are also attracted to decoy emerald ash borer females. Um, and then in Delaware, they use these really weird, uh, very simple sticky traps, which are on my next slide. And it's just like, it's like a mouse trap, like a, like a tar trap or something. It's just a big purple triangular prism that they, they land on and stick to. And that one to me seems like it is not going to be as effective for what we need it for, just because other insects would get trapped by it and... Emerald ash borers are very good at what they do, um, as you will see uh, later in my presentation. Um, ash trees in China are the only larval hosts for emerald ash borers. Uh, other places in Asia do have um, trees that also can sustain emerald ash borers. Uh, in Korea and in Japan... But emerald ash borers are very finicky, and that's why that's a big reason that populations are low in China is because it's a harsher environment for the emerald ash borer. But they love North American ash species. All of them, uh, all North American ash species, uh, are susceptible to emerald ash borer uh, attack, and. Um, not only are they susceptible, but they they love it. They're very susceptible. They're very weak. And emerald ash borer attacks on North American ashes are highly successful. Um, and I've got two quotes here from my sources that I thought were worth just a direct cut and paste. I think they're very uh, eloquent and I didn't want to have to rehash them and lose any of the meaning. So those two quotes are as follows. Ash mortality within stands in North America can reach up to 99%, regardless of ash basal area, its relative dominance, relative density, overall stand density, overall, or uh, rather just stand basal area, or any measure of species diversity. And ash mortality reaching 99% is like a complete wipeout of North American ashes. Um, almost like that's a, that's bad. Um, the other quote is, uh, one recent study conducted in Ohio concluded that for a given population of ash trees in a stand, nearly complete mortality is expected for all trees in six years in all circumstances. In addition, relatively lower densities of ash trees were found to be more susceptible to early deaths, uh, which means that, um, Although, uh, um, we can try and hide the ash trees within a mixed forest, it does, it's, it's really not all that effective. Um, so they're really attacking on all fronts and we need to, uh, build defenses to all these different angles. Um, and that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. These are my. This is my bibliography. The review of the emerald ash borer. Uh, that that that's an article from uh, somewhere. It's 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 written by like grad students or something. It's like a really really useful resource. It 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 breaks it all down. The attack of the emerald ash borer in the United States uh, from Ohio State was. Uh, it looked it, it looked more at the um, grim outlook of all this 
and then this the Journal of Insect Science down here. That is the best resource I could find for information about how the emerald ash borer lives in its native habitat, as opposed to how it is attacking and being invasive within America. And there's not all that much information on that. So that was a very, very useful resource. Uh, thank you for listening to my lecture.